This is the brand new Arrow Tour X5, and honestly, even if you're looking at a great deal on the outgoing Tour X4, unlike most new lids I've been reviewing recently, I'd be hard pressed to say that it's not worth the extra money. It really is a lot better. Okay, the short version is that the new Arai Tour X5 is provably safer, it's got a vastly improved visor mechanism, the peak's even better at blocking the sun, the ventilation's brilliant, and it's effectively four very good helmets in one. But no, it still doesn't have a drop-down sun shield. The viewing figures are probably dropping right off now, but if you're seriously thinking about buying an adventure helmet, then keep watching and I'll take you through everything I've found after a thousand miles of riding in it. Now this is a full production version and it was one of the very first out of the factory in Japan. Plain colours are expected in shops about December with graphics starting to filter through in January 2024. In the UK the Tour X5 will retail at £599.99 for plain colours and £699.99 for graphics. Yeah that does sound like a bit of a leap up for having graphics but having seen all the work that goes into laying those down by hand I'm not really that surprised. In Europe, the Tour X5 will retail at 879 euros for plain colors and 979 euros for graphics. So going by the current exchange rate, us Brits are actually getting the better deal this time. In America, it's called the Arai XD5. And while I don't have the firm prices for it yet, the XD4 is 639.95 US dollars for plain colors and 769.95 US dollars for graphics compared to £499.99 and £599.99 for the Tour X4 here in the UK. So I'd say a rough guess of 740 and 870 US dollars for the new XD5. Now Arai is convinced that its harder outer shell and soft inner liner is the safest design. So of course the Tour X5 has the super fiber shell that's claimed to have 40% greater tensile and compressive strength than regular glass fiber. And that's because the strands are much finer, which means the unique resin that Arai uses can penetrate more. Over the years, the shells have stayed basically the same shape, as Arai always goes for as round a design as possible to help it glance off in an impact, to dissipate energy and to reduce the rotational forces transmitted to your brain. But they have actually changed a lot with various different constructions and bits added, like the periphery belt that makes the area around the visor port even stronger. Inside is an expanded polystyrene shell. Same as pretty much of every other helmet, but Arai is unique in that it's the only company that has a multi-density EPS that's one piece. Look in cheaper lids and you'll often find deep channels cut intact like crumple zones, while even the most expensive alternatives have different pieces of EPS for each area. You need it harder around some areas of the head and softer in others, but Arai manages to mould all that into one piece. Now that's an expensive process. And it also makes it far harder to actually fit that EPS into the shell. Arai also says that it means that if one area is deformed in an impact, it doesn't leave a potentially harder area jutting out, creating a focus for the energy transmitted. Its shells absorb the energy throughout the interior so it deforms as one. Now this is, of course, an ECE 2206 helmet, which means it's passed much more stringent tests than the older 2205 lids. And when I reviewed the new Arai RX7V Evo, I explained how that was basically unchanged from the previous 2205 model. But this one is quite different to its older brother. The shell is now rounder and the visor mechanism has been moved down. Now that had already been done on the RX7 in the last 2205 version. And going by the five star results of sharp tests, it's possible that it maybe helped it pass 2206. So whether that means the Tour X4 wouldn't pass 2206 as it is, is impossible to say. All we can know is that the new Tour X5 has been tested and proven to reach a higher safety standard. And we'll look at safety again later, but for now, let's move on. As you'd expect of a premium handmade lid, the finishing on the Arrow Tour X5 is exquisite, with this one having a lovely deep gloss with a metallic flake in it. And these really are entirely handmade, from the initial shell to the priming and sanding. The graphics, fitting all the parts, and even the final polish before they're boxed and shipped, it's all done by hand. Only the bottom edge of the, the original shell, the visor aperture, and the chin vent and lower rear ports are cut out by machine. Actually, by a laser robot, which is really cool. To be fair, 
Shoei's are pretty much handmade too, but not quite to the same degree as an arrow. Now, I'm not saying that makes them better or anything. It's just, we've got a video up here uh, of Shoei looking inside the uh, Shoei factory. Um, so if you want to have a look, do. Anyway, the one thing I would say is that probably due to the very hard outer shell, Arrow paint can chip a little easier than some other helmets. I usually bash mine against the garage door when it's open, but this time I fell up the stairs at the Arrow factory and knocked it on the edge of a concrete step. I touched it in, but I hadn't even worn it when I did that, so I was gutted. Now the Kanji script isn't part of the design, by the way, but I'll tell you why that makes me so happy and so sad at the end of this video. There's two reasons to have a peak on a lid. To shield you from mud and stones that might be thrown up by a bike in front of you when riding off-road, and to help prevent you getting dazzled by low sun, which is far more likely to be useful to the majority of riders, especially me. The peak on the Tour X4 was great for this, and I'm pleased to say that the one on the Tour X5, or XD5, is slightly better still. Not 200 quid better, but I measured it to be seven mil further out from the top of the visor aperture than the old model. And you can tell when you're riding that it does shield that little bit more. And you can adjust it up and down, you can literally just move it. But I always have it at its lowest as it does the best job there in low sun. Especially this time of year, it's really helpful. And honestly, it's often more effective than a drop down sun shield for those kind of conditions. Now the old one had two screws on either side to get the visor off. And with that came the visor mechanism. To be honest, it was a faff. There's still a screw on either side of the new one, and it's plastic so it can shear in a crash, but it's a lot easier to take off and put back on, and you only need a coin if that's all you've got. And the screws are relatively soft, so they don't shatter when, they, when you tighten them, but that does mean they can show you clumsy tool marks if you look closely. It doesn't bother me. The great thing is that when you take the peak off, you don't need any replacement parts. Just screw the plate back on and you're ready to go. I would like it better if the screw was retained in the plate somehow though, I mean it's because it, it is a bit easy to drop if you're doing this at the side of the road. Something I uh, did just after shooting this video, um, I designed a little uh, screw retainer, 3D printed screw retainer and it works a treat, holds it in place, no more lost screws. So if you want to print one out for yourself, uh, just go to the printables website and search for Arrow Tour X5 Peak Screw Retainer. Now look, as good as this peak is, like every one I've tried, it does have limitations at speed. At motorway speeds and above, the drag can be significant, depending on the screen fitted to your bike. On the Transalp, I rode on the launch of this lid in Japan, and on my R1250 GS, both which have standard screens. The Tour X5 was fine for my five foot 10 inch frame, but if I put my head out into the clear airflow, there's noticeable and expected drag when looking left, right, and up. On the GS, I also noticed that at high speeds, I mean high speeds, behind the screen, in its lowest position, little pressure can be felt pushing down on the front of the peak. Though not to any extent that it kind of wound me up or bothered me or caused any problems. The Tour X4's peak used to drum a touch at speed, depending on the bike screen, and on the GS, the Tour X5 is no different. However, as with the previous lid, this can be reduced by adding some adhesive wheel rate. Wheel rate. Wheel Wheel weights, wheel weights. Whether the drumming bothers you, or indeed if you notice it at all, will depend on your bike, how you're riding it, and your height. But it is to be expected with any adventure helmet. Fortunately, like with the previous model, there's no noticeable flapping or vibration of the peak to distract you. Some adventure lids I've tried, like the Shuba T1, flap around annoyingly while riding. The drumming I'm trying to describe here is just a bassier note to the buffeting that your bike's fairing or screen can cause. I measured the Tour X5 to be 1,736 grams, which is just 26 grams more than the Tour X4. Honestly, I have never really found any helmet to be too heavy. It's the aerodynamics that can cause neck strain more than anything, but even after a full day on the Transalp and then on GS2, I didn't have any issues with the Tour X5. And with the peak removed, it's a sleek design that cuts through the air very easily. The venting on the Tour X4 was great, and on the Tour X5, it's still brilliant. Have a look inside the inner shell. There's eight ports in there alone, not counting the one at the chin, and they all combine to create a really good flow of air over the head. You don't get cold spots like there are with some lids, but it really does help keep it moving, and I prefer that to have feeling a jet on there. It feels really airy without 
being drafty. Now I found I whip the visor open a lot less as I slow down with this helmet, but I would say that if you're riding in the cold and want to seal things right off, annoyingly you'll need to buy an optional neck skirt for about 30 quid. Unless you have the RX-7V Evo as that came with one and it's the same. Personally, I don't bother, but you can feel the air move around the chin even with the little pull down spoiler, so keep it in mind if you don't wear a neck tube in winter. So the chin vent has two open positions and closed and blows up across the inside of the visor to the brow. And there's a slider inside that allows it to go to the mouth when you open that. It can be a bit awkward to get to, but it's not bad. I mean, the chin's out enough that you can get your hand in there. The vents in the visor have gone, and that's to make more room for goggles to fit. But the logo vent on the top, like the one on the new Quantic, is very efficient. The only grumble I have about these really is that they can be a bit trickier to dig dead bugs out of. On the top is another vent with two positions enclosed, then behind that is the exhaust vent, which can also be closed off or set in two stages. And below that are these two always open ports, which also draw stale air out. And that rear spoiler is a bit longer than the old ports on the Tour X4, which means the new lid doesn't fit quite as easily in my 52 litre Jivy Trekker top box. It'll go, but I'd say it's a struggle to get two helmets in because you have to twist it slightly. Before we look at the really key change to the Tour X5, I wanted to stress that I'm not sponsored and I don't take kickbacks or have any affiliate links. Frankly, it makes no odds to me whether you buy this helmet or any of the hundreds of others we've reviewed at bikesocial.co.uk in the product reviews section. I'm paid by Bennett's to make content that builds trust in our brand by helping people like you get more from motorcycling. And we've been insuring UK riders for more than 90 years now, and we cover most common modifications as standard, like aftermarket end cans, for instance. And we also have a 24 seven UK claims line, as well as a call center right here in Contry, if you ever need to discuss your policy. You get 90 days EU cover for free, and if you buy your policy direct from Bennett's, you also get a full year of bike social membership worth 60 pound for free. With that, you don't just get discounted track days and exclusive access to BSB. There's hundreds of savings to be had. I use the Halfords discount all the time and there's more like 25% off deals with muck off and 15% off everything at performance parts. That's including Yoshimura, Rizoma, Akrapovic, Jillies. Look, there's loads. So when your insurance is due, please do give us a try at Bennett's. And if you want to take advantage of the deals but are insured with someone else, you can pay to join Bike Social. Have a look at bikesocial.co.uk forward slash join. Right, this is a major improvement. On the Tour X4, you had to faff about with the peak screws to get at the visor, and then it was all a jumble of parts, so cleaning it was a pain. On the Tour X5, whether the peaks fitted or not, just open the visor to about three quarters, press the buttons on either side, and it all pops off, and you can take the visor off. Put it back on is easy too, then just line the clips up properly and push it back together. The mechanism's also been designed to resist scratching and jamming if dust gets in there. Oh, oh yeah, and uh, as with most of Edge lids, the visor doesn't open all the way up, leaving a little poking down, but it's not in your eye line. There's a Pinlock 120 XLT anti-fog insert supplied. And the 120 means it's the highest rated Pinlock. The XLT means extra light transmission. It also sits better against the visor than before. Not that I had problems with it in the past, as the new visor's rounder and less pointy than the old one. Remember that if you're having problems with the pin lock on any helmet, check the pins as they're cams that can be rotated to push the pin lock seal tighter against the visor or to give it a little more room. I read a while back someone saying their Tour X4 visor leaked. I've never noticed this and I've not had any issues with the Tour X5 on the road or even when hose testing it. But the visor fixing plates are designed to be adjustable, so if you think the visor isn't fully sealed, get your dealer to check it, it's a simple process. Now something I noticed with the Tour X5 is how great the field of view is through this big visor. For some that would likely be worn by people riding through stunning scenery, this really does let you feel like part of the world around you, not shuttered inside, peering out. It sounds daft, I know, but it's great whether you've got the peak on or not. It is just, it's great for looking around. Now then, you can whip the visor off and pop the side panel straight back on, then use a Tour X5 with goggles. Thanks to the visor vent ports being gone and a flatter nose guard, it's now easier to fit your goggles in and, and cleverly the exhaust wing on the back stops them sliding up the rear of the lid. There's also enough room under the peak for them to tuck in. So on, on some lids I have to put them over the chin, which then of course they steam straight up. Partly for around a shape, but also for ease of putting it on, the Tour X5 is 10 millimeter wider at the opening around the front. 
Now the cheek pads have been redesigned too, so they grip the bottom of your jaw more. And the lining is, as always, very well made and no doubt adds significantly to the cost of the helmet. It's adjustable with removable five millimeter inserts and it's made of a water repellent, eco-pure, antibacterial deodorizing fabric that's designed to help maintain your skin's natural pH of around 4.7. A sweat and soap makes your skin more alkaline, so this fabric is claimed to reduce uh, smells and rough skin, as well as being easy to clean. I can't really say how well it really works at keeping that pH, certainly not yet, but it, it feels good and I haven't had any problems with it getting damp from sweat or rain. Fit is of course very subjective and you must try any helmet on before you buy it, even if you're used to the brand. I would say though that Arrow offers a very solid support service and most dealers should be able to get you a perfect fit, especially the Arrow Pro Shops. If you need different sizes of cheek pads or top liners, they'll typically swap them out for free. You can find the uh, pro shops on the yari.co.uk website under the dealer search tab. Now I got quite a red mark across my head while wearing this on the launch, so the Arai technicians added some padding to make it sit slightly higher on my head. And when I got home, I took that out again, and the front, which is nice and soft, had, had given after a day or so, and now it fits lovely. The reason I took that out as well was because, because that kind of made it sit too high. When I got that pressure I mentioned on the peak, it just, I could feel it starting to try to want to rotate. Now, with that back to normal, it fits absolutely perfectly. So, it is really important that you get a proper fit with any helmet. There's no such thing as an Arai head or a showy head or any other head. You really need to try anything on. But it is true that Arai makes a longer, narrower, more oval inner shell for the European and American markets and a rounder one for Asia. All our eyes have a double D-ring strap. It's secure and it works, but the micrometric fastening used on a lot of lids now are totally safe and they're a lot easier to use with gloves on. Still, the double D is a proven quality design and it's what you'll always find on our eyes. A peak's always gonna add noise to any helmet. At worst, it's a vibration that irritates the hell out of you. At best, it's a slight extra bass note, as is the case with the Tour X5, at least for my five foot 10 inch height. I'd say it's pretty much the same as on the Tour X4, but it really does depend on your bike and its screen, as it's the buffeting from that screen and, the, and your fairing that causes any noise. In clean air, so perhaps with a short rally screen, there's no additional noise from this peak. Though, of course, at high speeds, with a short screen, that drag's gonna become significant. Now, I've been surprised at how quiet the Tour X5 is for normal wind noise, which is perhaps why I noticed the bass note that the peak can add. And I've reduced this, as I did on the Tour X4, by adding some uh, wheel weights, but it depends very much on where I position the screen. With both lids, I find it best to have my GSC standard screen at its lower position while riding with the peak, as there's no problem with drag until I get to high motorway speeds, and set like that, the additional noise is kept to a minimum. Please wear earplugs though, any helmet needs them over about 40 mile an hour. So whether you're riding with the peak fitted or not, please wear them as tinnitus in later life is no fun at all. I didn't when I was younger and now I have a constant light ringing. The Aero Tour X5 has been designed to take an aftermarket intercom of your choice thanks to a flat section on the sides giving ample room to stick it. In a time where more brands are trying to push you to their own comm systems, this is great news. Usually on our eyes, the speakers are fitted into the cheek pads, but there's now recesses ready behind them, making fitting much easier, as well as making it a lot less hassle when whipping the liner out for cleaning. And surprisingly, that gap doesn't add noise. Brilliantly, the neck skirt also has pockets built in to accept the wiring from an intercom, so whether you're fitting a Cardo or Senna or pretty much any other intercom, the Aero has been designed to let you do that. There's even a Velcro patch pre-installed on the uh, chin section for your microphone. If you have the Tour X4 and you want to update to the new model, then I'd say go for it. If you like that, you'll love this. If you're looking at an adventure lid, then definitely try one on. And if you're about to pull the trigger on a bargain price Tour X4, while they are good, the new Tour X5 really is a significant step up. So think carefully about whether you can justify the extra cost over the five years or so you'll have it. This really is a versatile helmet as it's effectively four in one. An adventure helmet with a peak and really wide field of view visor, a more serious off-road lid with a peak and goggles, a full face lid without a peak that's great on any machine and really gives a great field of view, and a cool looking street lid without the peak, but with goggles. And this is a bit of a bonus one, I guess, but it does look cool. 
Arrow has built a reputation for safety and it certainly meets the standards required, but independent testing has sometimes shown them to not always be the best. More recently, they've had five-star sharp reports, but Arrow has always believed that its years of race crash research and constant development with its own testing leads to the safest possible helmets. Michio Arai, the man who brought Arai to the Western markets and son of the founder Hirotaki Arai, told us in a presentation what he thinks is important. Every market has a standard, enforcing standard. Enforcing standard is for the sake of the protection of the wearers. That any helmet to be offered for sale has to have a certain degree of uh, the protection. So, uh, uh, the standards, that provides uh, protection to the well. But that's not all. It's all gives so, give protection for the manufacturers. So long as the helmet meets the standards, even if it fails to give protection, Manufacturers is free of liability. So, what the world moved, market moved to a dark way was many manufacturers, in order to fight against the mess, that they can uh, now fall in sales, if they do the thing in the duty to the economy. Right? They started to give many good features right, for sales. And then uh, and, uh, and, uh, sales features, like, uh, like uh, the built-in visor, or uh, uh, la, 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 things, no? Well, think of uh, what you have, the space inside the helmet. Yeah? Space between head and outer shell. That's the very most precious place for impact upstart management. How can I? Can we afford to give, use that for other? Eh? We never could do it. So, we never could ne, move that way. But, ne, so, we only worked ne, the, the same way. Gain in protection. That's what we have been doing. Then we had the sales went down, then 30%, 40%, even come down, the cost of half of what it used to be. But we never moved. We never changed the way of working. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that our helmets are the safest you can buy just because they say they are. Every crash is different, so I think the only measurable way of assessing and comparing them is through standardized testing. But having met Michio and his son Aki, not to mention the people making them, I am convinced that Arai firmly believes that its way is the best way to make a protective helmet. I'd love to know what you think, so please let me know in the comments below, or come and chat with me, Michael Mann, and the rest of the Bike Social team. And more importantly, thousands of other like-minded riders at the Bennett's Bike Social Facebook group. Hopefully, I'll see you there soon. Okay, this kanji script is Aki Arai's signature. As Michio Arai's son, he's the next in line to be in charge of the company. Yet throughout the event, Aki was there, either coordinating photo shoots or helping make sure everyone had what they needed. Whenever we were at the head office in EMEA, Michio was there. It was truly humbling to meet them, and I'm probably coming across as an Arai fanboy now, but I'm not. I will admit to being a Japan fanboy though, and spending some time there makes you realize what an incredibly different culture it is to what many of us are used to. It's so kind, respectful, caring, it's amazing. Anyway, the point is that this is Aki's signature and Michio signed it too, but with a different paint pen. When I got home, I waxed it to try to protect them, but that took Michio's signature straight off. I was proper gutted. 
Oh, I wanted to ask you too, I have about a 45 minute clip of Michio talking all about the history of AI and why the company works the way it does. If you'd like me to post that pretty much as a raw file, let me know in the comments as I think it's a fascinating insight into this iconic brand.